All right, guys. Oh, jeez. What a busy day. Anyways, thanks for coming back. Thanks for watching this video. Um, so I've installed Adobe Creative Cloud. The primary applications that I use for my creative job, my professional creative life, and um, I'm going to be running through a couple of tests today. Well, I'm going to be running through one major test. Because I am a photographer, I use Photoshop a lot, and I use Lightroom. So in this test, I'm going to be going into Photoshop, loading in one of my raw files, and editing it like I normally do for creative cl for my clients in my work. One thing that has been covered is Photoshop works. Photoshop works, there's maybe a few little bugs in it, but Photoshop works on the M1 chip, hands down, um, and it's just going to get better from here on in. But what I didn't see is whether or not it can handle big files. Like I'm used to using, I'm normally used to using big files. It Most of my work goes in magazines, gets printed, posters, like I've worked on movie posters, I've worked on billboards, I've worked on um, you know, all sorts of different things that require high resolution. Working on high resolution photos, sorry. Um, you really need a powerhouse machine sometimes. You need a lot of RAM, uh, GPU helps, uh, and CPU power absolutely is a must. So using the M1 chip, will that be good enough? Will it be great for the work that I do? Right now I use a Mac Pro, it's a 2009, it's older. I can't afford really to keep on upgrading machine after machine after machine. So I try to make sure that whatever I get, I can use for a longer period of time. With the 2009 Mac Pro, I was able to upgrade it. I was able to upgrade it over all of these years to get it up to the speed of a 2013 Mac Pro. So I'm gonna throw Photoshop up and we're gonna see what happens. All right, so right now uh, I have I have Creative Cloud, the Creative Cloud panel up, and uh, let's just log into, let's just run Photoshop and see what happens. All right, uh, as you can see, we're back. And um, as you can see, we are we are uh, running Photoshop. Seems okay, but I haven't really even, I haven't even opened up any files. So I'm gonna take a file. I had to load some files in. Um, let's just open this one up and see how it does. This is a photo from my last photo shoot um, that I did, oh, maybe a month ago. And, oh, here we go. Welcome to Camera Raw 13, color grading, yes, okay. Normally I use um, Lightroom, but I just want to kind of keep all of the applications separate. So in a future video, I'm going to be doing a Lightroom test, see how well it handles batch processing and exports and all that stuff. So right now we'll just use Camera Raw in uh, Photoshop to see how it goes. So here we have the image that um, that I took, and normally what I do, and I'm just gonna do this real quick, um, is increase exposure and, and just kind of adjust the colors, you know, a little bit to where I like to have them. And usually it's just not a whole lot. So normally what I like doing is, uh, I like making all my corrections. I just need to use um, certain, you know, tools and that kind of stuff. And I think, you know, we'll just fast forward through all of this because this is not a Photoshop tutorial. I just want to see how it uh, handles it. So this will be a kind of like a fast forward, you know, we'll just fast forward through a lot of this or just kind of go through a lot of this quick. Um, and I'll come back with my, um, res the results and my opinion about, you know, how Photoshop works with uh, larger files and, and high res files from a camera and that kind of stuff. So, um, We'll just finish this. <sighs> All right, so I threw everything that I could at Photoshop. 
This is the next day. And for the most part, it works fine. There was a couple of glitches where I noticed that the zoom kept on, it kept on zooming out when I was working on a file, um, when I was really tight in. It was just random zooms. But overall, it's a great experience for Photoshop that's non-native to the M1 chip and is running through Rosetta 2, and I don't see much problems with it. I put uh, high-res high res raw files through it uh, from my, you know, from my A7 III. I put through a high-res raw file from a, from a Fuji GFX 100. And if you don't know what that is, that's a 100 megapixel camera. That's the largest, pretty much one of the largest sensor sizes you can get out of a out of a professional camera and it handled the file great. Now there's only one real thing that happened that I was just, that I, I was kind of aware about, but I wanted to test it to make sure that I was, you know, on the right, you know, that, that I was r right in terms of like what I assumed. The Photoshop has a problem and I ended up bottlenecking the, uh, the CPU with the 100 megabit file or 100 megapixel file and using light effects. And light effects are something in Photoshop that uses 3D software or uses its 3D engine to be able to generate some lighting effects. When I opened up Task Manager, or sorry, Activity Monitor, I wanted to see what kind of performance was happening within the system. And I bottlenecked the CPU with the lighting effects from Photoshop to the tune of like 99%, 117%, and I ended up getting the beach ball. But what I noticed is that it didn't actually access the GPU. So there's a problem with Photoshop and its communication with the GPU side of things. Now, once this all gets resolved, I'm pretty certain it's going to just fly. It's just going to be able to handle it in a seven core GPU, um, even the eight core, well, obviously the eight core will, will be fine. But overall, it's working great, except for that 3D side of things. The 3D side of things in Photoshop, that's where it's gonna get constrained and bottlenecked, and you, that's where you're gonna have to see a problem. I hope that helps. Like I, I, I need to run these tests just to make sure that this is something that I would love to, I would like, I would like to use in a professional sense, and it brings the price point down a lot for people like me, that are photographers, that are designers, that are creative professionals, that can use these inexpensive laptops, inexpensive machines, um, because at the end of the day, this machine is you know, only $12.99 Canadian, you know, $9.99 US or something around there. Um, and, you know, the, the price point and value proposition that you have, you know, you can run Photoshop. That's great. So this is a real solid option for professional uh, Photoshop artists, professional photographers that primarily use Photoshop in their retouching. In the future, I'm gonna just run, well, in a future video, I'm just gonna run Lightroom through it. I'm pretty sure Lightroom is not gonna have a problem um, and see how that goes, as well as with other Adobe Creative Cloud uh, software. So I hope you liked this video. If you did and you found it informative, please hit that like button. If you haven't already, please subscribe. Again, I'd love to get the subscriber count up of this channel we're doing other things we're not just covering creative technology but we're covering uh, gaming and the tech sector and, and all these fun things so if you can support us that would be great and we can bring you more content and more just fun videos to be had to to watch so thanks again leave a comment below if uh, you have something that you want to share with us or that you want to see from us so until next time, I'll see you later.